Well, how do you there, Chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. Now, today, Chums, I'm going to take you through the most asked questions that I've had for this update. The first is, how do you find the vile brood and the brood mother, the sort of giant creature that you've got to take out? Were well, you looking for planets like this just as you're flying in and around systems, and they will be marked with a little skull, a bit like pirate systems, that says void brood detected. You need to fly down to those planets and find yourself a grub. And I'll show you what you're looking for when you get to the planet. Yeah, John, so a lot of people say that you have more luck near to buildings, or that's what I've read online, or what people have fed to me in comments. However, you just land anywhere on a planet, as you can see here, I'm not near a building. My ship's just over there. I only went a few hundred U's from it, and I found a grub right here. So they're marked with this sort of icon, and it's a juicy grub. Head on over, and pick it up. Okay, right. The next question I've got is a lot of people have been saying, Captain Steve, I keep I keep summoning the grub. So if you just summon it, you just sort of hatch it like this. And when I hatch it, nothing comes. Nothing comes and attacks me. If you're in relax mode or in creative mode, or if you've changed your combat settings and dialed them down so you're not going to get any combat, you won't get to fight one of these grubs. You have to be in normal mode at a bare minimum. So make sure you put it into normal mode. Sweet. Now, great. This is not the best planet to be doing this on. Now, if you are on a planet like this and you don't want to be fighting the grub, well, the brood mother and sentinels at the same time, like I really don't, I, you can actually pop these on any planet at all. So I'm just going to go to a dead planet. I'm going to go to a completely, you know, a rust planet and I'll see you there, people. So yes, that's correct, chums. You can choose your battlefield. This is going to be my battlefield. There we go. So let's just pop it in here and pow pow. Vile brood detected, and here it comes. Right. Take that in the freaking face. Now the next thing I'm being asked is why am I not getting the actual drops from this creature? You have to take off all the armor. So make sure you shoot off all the armor plating on this creature. There's quite a fair bit to get off of the dang thing. And right now I think I'm shooting my freaking ship. So let's try and move my ship out of the way. Take that you little scatterbug. Need to get around to the back of it, make sure I've got all the armor. You gotta get these underplatings as well. It's even got some on its legs. You need it to be sort of like completely bare boned, like this. There we go. And I think there's one leg at the opposite side that I haven't got. Yes, the middle leg there. Okay, now it's completely undressed if you want to call it that just go to town on the dang thing take it out give it take that bug of evil i haven't fully upgraded my scatter blaster so every battle with these is is quite a tough battle i'm still more op than it oh another question is how many heads are there to get? How many of these helmets? There's four of them. So, there we go. I think this is my third one now. There we go. I've just got the glowing one. There's just one more that I need to get. There's four of them. Next question is how do you actually adorn them? How do you put them on yourself? Well, I'll get to that in one second. One other question I've got is can they be duplicated? Yes, they can. However, what I'd say is you've got to be bang on perfect with your placement of these refiners now. So if I go down here and I look for that grub. There we go. Let's get the grub. Where is it? Come on, grub. Where are you? There it is. If I put all five in there, grab one of these, stick it right on top. And it has to be almost perfectly aligned. And it, it, it needs to be almost bang on perfect. It... it it's so difficult now. If it's not 100% aligned, it doesn't work. 
At least that's what I'm finding. You have to be spot on. It took me like about four attempts the first time. It's a lot more precise than it was before. But there you go. I've successfully managed to duplicate a shed load of them. So I did have five. I've now got loads of the things. I've got 30 of them now, people. And they work. You can just pop another one. I'll tell you what, I might as well do it. Might as well get the last of the, um, the heads, might I? I'll just cut the footage and I'll reconvene just as I kill it. Okay, it's nearly done. Take that. That should give me my last helmet. It should do, anyway. I did take off all of its armour. Um, okay. Didn't pop it that time, but I did take off all of its armour. So maybe you can't spawn it on the same planet twice. I'm not 100% sure on that one. So let's just head on up back to the Nexus, and I'll show you how you put this gear on. Okay, towards the back of the old spatial anomaly near Kronos and the egg machine is the appearance modifier. You can also find these in stations. You can even build them at your own base. But I'm on anomaly at the moment. I'm just going to hit head, and it's going to be these Latin numbers here. So you've got the brood in the skull... You've got the Hunter's Jaws, the Bioluminous Headpiece, and there are two others that I can get there, Chitin Mandibles and the Broodmother's Maw. And yeah, I might have to do battle and combat with a couple more of those things on planet. But yeah, that's how you can actually equip them. Obviously, you just save your changes rather than just ignore them. Now, while I'm in here, I may as well show you how you can land on water using your ship. You need to get yourself a piece of tech and you need to buy that piece of tech from this guy that looks like a cuttlefish gone wrong. His name is Hyperion. He sells ship parts and stuff. Go to re research starship upgrades and the one that you want is around here. It's Aqua Jets. So it's underneath launch thrusters. Yes, you're going to have to unlock the launch thrusters if you haven't already. And then it opens up this tree arc. Go over to Aqua Jets and unlockate that one. You can see there the recipe for installing it. Crystallite sulfide you're going to get under the water and it's going to be at these sort of like barnacles that shoot massive plumes up you have to grab them from the sides and avoid being hit but once you've got that and you've got that installed into your ship like i have over here and i've got it just there the aqua jets oh, i'm not getting adjacency bonus for them but the aqua jets i've got those installed i can land my ship on water how do you land on water as you're flying above it you press the land button it's that simple also while you're swimming if you look at the surface of the water you can actually call your ship to land on the water above your head it's pretty darn handy just to show you the landing on water there you go there's no island below me I can just simply press the land button, which is on PlayStation, is the square button. It's the same button you press to get out of your ship. And you actually end up on top of your ship. But if you dive into the water... Kapow! Lovely jubbly. And if I've swum a little way away from my ship, 10 dumb miles away right now, what you do is you just do that, and you can call it to the top of the water above you. If you swim up, you're going to see the gnarly effects as it hits the water surface. Look at that. How cool is that? And then when you're underneath it, you can just press a button to get into it. As simple as. I guess. Awesome. Right, now I need to find an actual bit of land to land on. In fact, I'll go back to the Nexus. Something else to show you in the Nexus, people. Okay, yeah, so I did a video earlier where I stood up here for an hour checking the missions to see if the Broodmother mission actually appeared. I've had a few people send me screenshots of saying it is definitely there. And there we go. I can see it right here. Exterminate vile broods. So I'm going to hit that mission up, initialize mission, and start mission. Sweet. And it's asking there whether I want to do this alone. Now, when I was trying this earlier, I turned multiplayer off. Maybe having it in multiplayer increases the spawn rate for this mission. Because maybe it might be a tough one. I don't know. But I'm just going to go and run this mission. And I'll give you the basics of it. So I've started the mission. And we're going to trigger it. We're going to fly down to the planet. And see what the mission objective actually is. To see if there's any narrative. This is the first time I've done this. So this is the Brood mission. It's taking me to a new system. I'm flying towards the planet. Now, if you do not see the mission inside of the Nexus Cube, inside the Space Anomaly, they refresh every 10 minutes on the dot. It's synchronized to the internet, so you can even do a countdown and see when it's going to change. But it's all down to luck. And like I say, I waited around for an hour. So they're not that frequent. They're as rare as rocking horse turd. 
Okay, chums, well this is really weird. The actual mission marker has taken me right out to sea. I don't think we're going to be fighting a brood mother right out at sea. This is very strange, very strange indeed. But I'm going to land where it's telling me to land. Like I say, it's the first time I've done this mission. We'll see what it says after I've landed, shall we? I don't think there's grubs under the water, but I could be wrong. What the actual flying fudge? Okay. Well, it looks like we're going underwater for this fight. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you know when I get there, people. Well, this is different. It's taken me to a crashed ship. Why? Why on earth would it take me here? Well, there's no more mission marker now, so I don't really know what's going on. Sweet. Yeah. Got it. Well, it says here, exterminate the vile brood. Zero free. Crush vile brood grub to... S to s okay. Here? Underwater? You're having a laugh, mate, aren't you? Alright, well, if you brought me here. I'd do it. Water pur purifies the scent. Right, okay. I have no idea why it had to take me to a crash ship under the water. Kind of glad it did, though. I mean, look at those freaking majestic beasties. Oh, yeah. Very majestic. Okay, well, this is a vile brood planet. So, you're going to find grubs on here. I mean, obviously, there wasn't one under the water. But we've got one right here, so I'm going to have that one anyway. Okay, right. This is about as good a place as any to fight one of these guys in, anyway. Boom. Here we go. And I've got to fight three of these broods, apparently. Okay, you know the drill. You saw me do this earlier. So, I reconvene when I get close to killing it. Okay, yeah, right. I need a couple more shots to go. Got him. Thank you, yes. Looks like I popped a milestone. And look at that. We just got the Brood Mother's Moor. Lovely jubbly. Okay, well, now I've got to kill two more to complete this mission. I'll let you... Well, I think I can just pop another one straight here. I don't think I have to go any further. Just I could do with maybe waiting for my shields to recharge, but, you know, I'm feeling brave or stupid, one or the other. Right, I'll reconvene when I've nearly finished the mission, okay? There's two signature moves that this creature does. One where it goes up like that, and it's going to spit into the air, and it's going to rain down, just jump back. And it does another move where it sort of curls up into a ball, and it looks like it's going to jump in the air, and it does. And it tries to sort of sit on you. It only tends to do that one when you get really close. It tends to do the long-range purple spit into the sky when you're at distance. So it's very easy signpost to know when it's going to do what and how it's going to do it. And to get from side to side of it, just make sure you can sort of melee strafe jump to the opposite side if you miss some of the armour on the opposite side. But we're all good. There we go, we've got him. Sweet. Dundily and done. I've only got one more left to go. Okay. Now, I would say this is a lot harder than finding them normally, because you've got to fight, fight three, and fight three in a row, pretty much. And you know what? My trigger finger is actually aching now. Okay, right. We got them. We got all three of them. So there you go. That's how you do the actual mission. There's not much lore there. I'm not too sure why it took me underwater on my first step. Hopefully it doesn't do that to you. Or maybe that's it. It's the first time I've run it, so I really don't know. I can't say for sure. I would have thought the first step would have taken you to a grub. For whatever reason, it didn't for me. So it's lucky I had some on my person. Right, so let's call in the old Nexus. Let's go turn this mission in. Okay, right, so let's hand the mission in. Let's claim my Quicksilver. Complete mission. Chickaboom. Lovely jubbly. Now I just need to make an auto save. So I'm just going to run back to my ship, jump in my ship, out of my ship. And yes, I've still got two more questions from the community. One of them is how do you access the new emotes? And the other one... Where is the Xbox update? Okay, right, so how do you access the emotes? If you go to your quick menu and go into gestures and just keep going over towards the right, you should find these ones. You've got this one, prepare for action. How cool is that? Very superhero-esque. I really like that one. I mean, look at it. That is so cool. Okay, right, the next one. Bam, 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 bam. 
Go this one. Lovely. Very lovely. And we've got this one. With our arms crossed. Yes, now you can look like you're straight out of Ashoka. Pretty much everybody in Ashoka, the Star Wars sort of series on um, freaking Disney. Everybody stands like that for long periods of time. You can turn that into a drinking game. I don't, not that I condone drinking games, but there we go. Here we go. We can break into dance as well. Look at us go. Look at us go. Look at us busting all those moves out. I know. Freaking like a demon. Look at me go. Heck yeah. Brilliant. Eh? Heck yes. So there we go. That's how you access all the emotes. Now I just need to find myself a console to go and hit on up to look at the real world and interact with real Steve. Talk about the old Xbox update. Now this probably isn't going to be for everybody because not everyone's got an Xbox. But let's head on over here. Let's go. Oh, another question I've got is when is the expedition going to start? So if you go into this terminus here, you can see here that the current one is finished and we're still waiting for a new journey to begin soon. Honestly, think it's either going to happen Friday, which is tomorrow, which by the time you watch this today, probably around 1 p.m. If it doesn't happen, they'll probably let the weekend mission run across the weekend and they'll probably put it live on Monday. Will they put it live before the Xbox gets the update? I really hope not. I really hope Xbox players get to join us on this at the same time as everybody else. Okay. But anyhow, let's hit this terminal up then. Let's go on over to Captain Steve in the real world. Execute a mondo! Chicka-pum-pow! Jums, what I have behind me right here is an Xbox official page on the actual update, this pure box. And they're talking like it should be out for Xbox already. And it's just not out as yet. It hasn't been rolled out. Now I have done a poll over on my community to ask people why they feel it's not out. So we we'll jump on over to the polls quickly, people. Okay, Jums, I'm over on the old Tinterwebs and I put this poll out. Why do you think the No Man's Sky Worlds has been delayed for Xbox and Switch again? Apparently it's now out on Switch, so it's just Xbox that hasn't got this, or at least that's what I'm being told. All the crashes and hangs on launch, platform certificate failed. So Xbox has quite got a rigorous sort of testing system. If they see the game is crashing or hanging on Xbox, Series S, X, whichever platform, and they see that it's hanging and crashing quite a lot just on their little demo play before they certify the update, they push back and say, no, it's not quite ready. So sometimes it has to go for a remit of patches and bug fixes on all the other platforms. And then Xbox catches up later. And it just seems to be that there's a real rigorous testing system, which is great for Xbox players, but not at the same time. It's a double edged sword. 17% of people feel that's why it is. And that's kind of why I feel that it is. Now, the highest inside of this poll is there's more red tape for these platforms, not Hello Games' fault, which is exactly the same as this top one. When we put them both together, that's pretty much 80% of the audience that's saying the same thing. It's red tape and it's to do with the certification process being very robust. So a lot of Xbox players are saying, well, that's not true because a drift came out on all platforms at the same time. Okay, cast your mind back. How many bugs and game crashes and hangs were there on a drift? Hardly any. It wasn't until you got really far into some of the phases that some of the phases failed. But they wouldn't be testing the expedition because the expedition wouldn't have been running. There wasn't much in the last update apart from the expedition. So there wasn't any bugs or crashes. Hence why it came on all platforms. Fine. So that kind of proves the point. The bigger the update, the more the chance that Xbox isn't going to get it at launch. It, that's that's that speaks volumes to me anyway now i put the other two in here because i saw people's comments saying well it's probably because xbox and switch are the weakest links and they're holding back the technology and it's harder for hello games to code it to get it onto those platforms and then other players were saying well maybe they're biased towards pc and playstation because their player bases are higher in number i mean you've only got to look at the sales for xbox and see that it is the actual it, it, it doesn't sell as many. It's just simple math. I'm not having a dig at Xbox players. I'm not a Sony pony, even though if somebody asked me what would I rather play, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I freaking love the Xbox joypad. The Xbox joypad is a is a joy. It's, a, it's called a joypad for a freaking reason. This is a game pad for you know, PlayStation. I love the Xbox pad. It just feels beefy. It feels weighty. It's beautiful. Yeah, I do like the Xbox. I play Power World on my Xbox. So I'm not having a dig at Xbox by any shape or form. And I do like Starfield as well. But yeah, it's um, it's not good. And it'd be nice if 
Xbox wasn't saying you need to go and speak to Hello Games. And then when you go to Hello Games, you just get a wall of silence. Or if you do get a reply, it's you need to speak to Xbox. You just get passed around in a freaking circle. It'd be nice if one of the community managers for either of those places actually said, you know what, hands up, the certificate failed for this reason, that reason and the other. It wouldn't take much to do that, you know, it really wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. It's just frustrating and infuriating because a lot of my actual audience is on the Xbox. And I see a lot of comments of people saying, I'm really feeling like selling my Xbox to buy a PlayStation or I'm feeling like uninstalling No Man's Sky until it actually appears or I'm not watching any content for fear of spoilers. I do get it. I honestly do get it. I was just scrolling down on the interwebs and you can see there Orbital was also delayed. It happens a lot. It happens a lot, people. I, ah, I, I really do feel for you. I honestly do. Well, anyway, people, I feel that I've covered off all the main questions. The only thing that I haven't done yet that I'm meaning to do is to do the new cooking recipes using some of this meat that we're getting from Killing the Brood. I don't know whether the cooking products are going to have any sort of perk to them. I don't know whether they're going to fetch any more nanites than normal, but I'm waiting for these recipes to appear inside of the No Man's Sky Assistant app. And once they do, I'm going to get crafting them and have a little bit of a look for them. But I think I can do a separate video just on the cooking related items because I don't think everybody's going to be into cooking unless they do something really fantastical. I can't see that happening, but you never know until we see the write-up for these objects. Anyway, people, that's everything that I've got for you. If I have missed anything, if you've got any other questions, sound off in the comments, let me know, and hopefully I'll be able to answer them there, or I might even do a video if it's a really cool question. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Subscribe. Let's hit that.